All right, well, it was a long night here at the Maverick Center, but Fierce Fighting Championship 33 concludes with Kent Mafileo getting his hand raised and looking back in full form. Blake O'Ruling alongside Zach Partridge. Zach, we'll talk a little bit more about that later on, but for now, we're going to kick things off with David Sorensen and Dennis Bialy, which was a very interesting fight. Yeah, it was really fun. Dennis taking the fight on 11 days' notice, showed up clean right hand. I mean, my goodness, he, he was... He was very good with it. Uh, David Sorensen, great chin. I mean, man, he took a lot of shots and he wore them well. I mean, I don't even, it's been a long night, but like, did he, did he even get, he didn't get dropped or anything. And he ate so many clean shots. I never even saw his knees go or anything. Uh, super tough, uh, you know, really, that was a really fun uh, way to kick off the night. Action packed and, uh, you know, they, they put on a show. Austin Taylor, a good friend of yours from back in the day, DJ Fia Fia, Austin Taylor, getting it done via TKO. Yeah, man, that was a, that was a fun fight. Or, you know, uh, pretty green, right? Both guys pretty green. Uh, come in, get a good stage to make Austin to make his debut. DJ, um, I you know I give I tip my hat to DJ. He's always had a goal to fight at the Maverick Center. Got that opportunity, did it. Probably not optimal conditions. Becoming a new father was a little out of shape when he started camp. Had to cut a lot of weight. Uh, made the weight, um, you know, I, uh, you know, appreciate DJ a lot, but, uh, you know, Austin comes in, gets the big win, hats off to him, 35 years old, you know, challenged to do something hard and decides to take an MMA fight. Like, I mean, the ball's on that guy, right? I mean, uh, so, you know, that, that was a cool moment between two just great human beings. Um, you know, it, it, it was good. It was cool. Hunter Garcia getting it done versus Emmanuel Aguilera. That was an incredible fight. Up to that point, that was one of the wildest ones we had seen. That was a that was a crazy fight. You know, um, Emmanuel wanted to go pro. His coaches have said you need more experience in MMA and grappling and things like that. Didn't look bad. Grappling not bad. Grappling's not bad at all. Uh, Hunter Garcia, who had kind of walked through his first two opponents, said, I want a tougher fight, and tougher fight he got, uh, ate, eating some head kicks. Um, they both hurt each other on the feet. Hunter gets the split decision win. Um, you know, I can't – I Hunter's a stud. I, I've talked about it before. Emmanuel, he was – it was the perfect fight for perfect dance partners, and, and they had a lot of fun. Talon Carvalho versus Tyler Harden. Tyler Harden put up quite the fight. A lot different than the Ricky Mamone fight, but still, Talon Carvalho comes away as the amateur lightweight champion in what was one of the best amateur performances I think I've ever seen. Uh, Talon looked like a stud. Um, you're, we're watching the evolution of a, a young fighter like happen before our eyes and a guy that's always in the room. You, you can see the layers that he's just adding on to his game. Um, I, you know, you're watching him, you know, he gets good, great work in at the pit, but then you're seeing him doing one-on-ones with Joel Haro and you see him moving around a little bit too and, and kind of just picking from the best and, and he looked like it. Tyler Harden, man, you know, he's come to Fierce and, he, and he's lost twice in two title fights. The, kid, the kid's a stud. He showed a lot of good things um in the uh in this fight i mean i think he showed you know the ricky mamone fight unfortunately got stopped a little bit early it happened so fast it was like we didn't really get to see tyler harden we got to see tyler harden tonight and you know he was the first one you know Ammon garcia i think was just on a different level than town when he fought but we saw guys that were on a comparable level to each other tyler um i thought he showed some really good striking he showed some really good things and just a ton of toughness um, I, you know, I, I think he, uh, he's, he's, I, I, some of the most dangerous pros are ones that have, uh, you know, tough losses in amateur. I think that drops him to four and four, if I'm correct. Um, some of those guys are some of the scariest, um, pros. He's going through some things and experiencing things that's just going to make him a better fighter. I fully believe that Tyler Harden is going to grow into an absolute monster. Talon Carvalho, what's next for him? Uh, probably defending his title against one of the very, very many talented 155ers uh, in the area. Mark Gonzalez takes home the belt in what was one of the wildest finishes. I, I even told Mark myself, I was looking down at my notes and then I hear a big thud, and Lauren Sewell was on the ground. <laughs> I mean, Mark's always – I mean, it happened in his very second fight. He won 
very similar, throwing a quick check left hook and dropping the guy. And I think that was kind of the book on him is watch out for his check left hook. Well, I think, I don't, I don't know if what happened there. I mean, Lauren showed how good of a striker he is back in February for five rounds. He has that style where he likes to move in and out, and he has that style where his hands are kind of low. It, it, it does invite some action when your hands are low. Like, that's what you're looking for. But at heavyweight, one of the dangerous things with that is it just takes one. I mean, Mark, Mark has, for how big he is, he is deceptively quick and athletic. He is. And, uh, you know, I, I train with him. I spar with him. We all know better. We all watch out for that check left hook in the room. We know. It. It's dropped me before. It, it has um, in the room. So um, I, I know I know, uh, I know that the power that Mark brings with that, um, you, know, you know, good on him. Second, second one-hit guy to pick up a belt here this year at, at Fierce FC next to Ammon Garcia. And, uh, you know, we'll see what's next for Mark. And, you know, we'll see what's next for Lauren. I <laughs> – it's like heavyweight that happened. It's like, Hey guy, he's still really, really good. You know what I mean? So, uh, good on him. It's good, good fight to finish off the prelims. Chris Chu moves to two and O versus TJ Kohler in a tough fight, but nonetheless gets the job done. <laughs> Chris is so tough. And you could just tell like when TJ, I kind of felt like in the second round, there was a moment where you could just see it in TJ's eyes. He's like, how hard do I have to get this dude to go away? Cool. Chris is not going away. And he already texted me tonight before the show is over, ready to rock and roll again as early as September if the opportunity arrives. So uh, we'll be working on that. But, uh, you know, uh, Chris is as tough as they come. He is stubborn. He is – he's a brute, man, and he's a tough fight for anybody. Dude, TJ Kohler was heavy, came in with a little bit of an injury, but he was – he was like – he was well over 215 pounds a week ago. This fight was supposed to be at 185 and he says, can, can we have 205? And Chris goes, yeah, no problem. And, and, and Chris Chu just keeps, you know, that train just keeps rolling. Andrew Mickelson moves to 5-0 and in the Maverick Center with a showing like one that we have seen in the past. It looked like how he looked when he would tee off on guys back in the Maverick Center as an amateur, but able to get the job done and move to 2-0 and as well as a professional. I, 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 it was an absolute pleasure working with Eric Tier. He was probably the one of the most professional guys I've he was. ever worked with. He, he was really fantastic. Was. He was kind. He was cool. And the thing that I loved about him, everybody says, you know, oh, he's, on, he's this, he's that, whatever. Say what you want about him. You looked at him as he was getting ready for that fight. He believed he was coming out, and he believed he was coming to win that fight. Um, youth matters, right? Age matters in the sport. Athleticism matters. Andrew just too much everywhere. Um, but again, Eric asked for this fight. Nobody else wanted to fight him. So, you know, my hat's off to Eric and Andrew is like one of the toughest people for me to find matchups for. I don't think it got any easier tonight. It's going to keep getting tough. (laughs) Roman Isbell after over a decade away from the cage, able to get it done. His first win since 2013. I mean, that was a cool fight. I mean, uh, Roman, Looked very much in his element. I, one thing he, interesting he said to me um, a couple weeks ago is, I've always been a slow starter. He didn't look like he slow start to me. Um, Tiago, Tiago came in kind of trying to the same things, kind of trying to pull guard. Roman just did not play that game with him at all. Did his homework, kept his composure, was just kind of in control of where the fight took place, which was kind of his path to victory, right? Um, apparently Tiago has some sort of condition that can affect his stomach sometimes. And, um, something happened where that flared up and he just, he, he couldn't, he couldn't answer the bell. Um, not the bell, but you know, couldn't uh, get back up, couldn't get back up when the ref was trying to get him to stand up and he was done. Uh, I think that was so cool. Again, I'm so grateful that Roman chose our show to, to make his return on and, uh, I, I, I hope that wasn't a one and done for him. I, I'd like to see Roman again. I was talking to our technical director as we have a lot of conversations throughout the entirety of the broadcast and, and Roman was giving his post fight interview and he turns to me and goes, I really like that guy. And I said, yeah, Roman's one of the best. He's the coolest dude. Orlando Sanders shows his veteran, veter, veteran men ship. It's not a fierce broadcast. I'm okay. I, I can mess up a little bit. All right. <laughs> We're tired. Orlando Sanders gets the job done versus Nino Hanau in a dominant fashion. I mean, uh, this is what I was thinking. I 
I am very high on Nino. Like, I think he's a very good fighter, and I think he's a dog, and you could see it. I think a lot of fighters would have broken under the constant pressure that Orlando put on him. Nino uh, is a true pro and a true fighter's fighter. You know, he worked his way out of every position. It was like every time he stood up, too. Every time he got up, the, you could feel the swell of the crowd. They were waiting for something big to happen, and Orlando was just – he was in complete control – of that fight and just wanted, you know, he just, he looked unbelievable to the point where I leaned over to Fierce FC owner Cody Bunderson. I'm like, I want to know who the two guys are that beat that guy. Because Orlando looked like an absolute monster at welterweight. Speaking of which, Barrington Bishop seemed to follow suit. Also a guy on the road comes in and looked like an absolute monster. I mean, I th- and I thought I thought Johan looked fantastic. I thought um, I mean I thought they were very evenly matched. I thought Johan Johan was winning the exchanges. He won the first round on the judges' scorecards, and uh, Johan looked very very good. And then uh, one of the one of those stiff jabs, I, I think, broke his nose, and and uh, and that was the beginning of the end for Johan. Super tough. Um, first time I think he's ever been finished. Um, you know, Barrington's a stud too. I mean, you want to talk about another guy, another welterweight, um, you know, going to cause some problems. Another great guy to work with. Um, you know, hats off to, to, to them and their team. Um, Johan's just always been a fan favorite of mine as a potential former opponent and, and just a fight fan watching him fight. I love watching that guy fight. And it's just always a pleasure to – he just creates car crashes, and he's just a brute, and he's a, he's a stud and an even better person. So uh, th- that one was tough to watch, somebody that I, that I really like lose, but at the same time, Barrington was so gracious as the victor in that fight. Uh, he gained a new fan out of me as well. I always say, and we've all been saying for years now, this is Kent Mafileo's house, and we'll talk about him in just a moment, but Zeke Latu seems to be also bidding for that, considering the second round would you consider it a comeback win? I mean, round one went to him, but then the majority of round two seemed like he was up against the ropes and then able to punch his way out into another victory. I, I it kind of just felt like there was some he, – he was losing focus a little bit maybe just because of uh, just a lack of – like a little bit of frustration. I mean, Avery spent a good amount of time on his bike in that first round. But at the same time too, like, I mean, I'm not – it's not my job to whatever, but, you know, Zeke can – you know, probably could have cut him off a little bit more instead of chasing and, and done some things to engage more. I, I don't know. I think Avery, uh, I mean, all the out-of-towners seemed the, the elevation, you know, it, it kind of got to them, whether it was mental or physical. You know, they, 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 all, they pretty much all mentioned it to me um, as they left the cage. Um, but the big thing with Zeke is we've seen it where he's had wins and he's let him slip through his fingers. This time he didn't. That's growth. That's fantastic. That's back-to-back wins for him, back-to-back knockouts. Get a little momentum going. Um, watch out. And first time ever winning in the second round as well for yeah. him. Kent Mafileo, William Tarpley. It was back and forth, but Kent Mafileo able to land the uppercut that finished and closed out the show. Seemed to be back to full form. A- April was a win, but a-, a lot of people thought that he maybe looked a little bit uncharacteristic in there. Coming into tonight, a whole different story. Kent looked to me like the Kent that was taking off heads as he was climbing to 4 and 0, 5 and 0, right? Like he was violent. He- and the thing that I loved the most about him, he had that look in his eye, he had that energy, he had, that- he had everything about him the back of like reclaiming, like, this is my house. And he and he started fast. I think when people said they didn't love what he looked in April, I wasn't as critical. I thought there were some things that obviously he could have done better in April, but I didn't think he did I don't I didn't think it was a poor performance by any means. I think he just started maybe a little bit slower than, you know, maybe people would have liked. I think that would be a fair criticism, but it was a different whatever. He got his hand raised, he got the job done. This time he came out, put his foot on the gas. Pushed to pace. Tarpley was, his, I mean, he was tough. He was game. Durable. He was durable. He took shots. He took big shots. He gave big shots. He hit Kent with some uppercuts that were, that I think probably drop a lot of heavyweights. Um, Kent Mafaleo. You know, we talk about chins. Kent is the, here's a, here's a fun one. Kent is the 
only person that has gone to a decision against Ben Mo- Ben Moa, who is a walking knockout was a walking knockout machine for the last decade here in Utah, and um, and Kent was the only person when they were amateurs they fought. Like Kent has a fantastic chin. Like Tarpley just like I just don't think he I don't think he could just deal he couldn't deal with the pace that Kent was putting on him and I loved watching Kent go to work and like from the start it was like foot on the gas starting with the jab closing distance he was the one initiating the the contact and not waiting um when Kent fights like that I think he is as good as anybody in the western region probably in the United States that's not signed to PFL belt. He's a problem for everybody, and that's the Kent we saw tonight. Power was felt for sure. What a show it was. Excited to move forward into September 7th, live from Warehouse 22. Zach, when will those tickets be on sale, actually? August 9th. August 9th. Next Friday, they will go on sale. We have a fantastic card. Um, Super excited. The former AMI lightweight champ at Fierce, Ammon Garcia, making his pro debut against Abe Ayala, Ayala, who fought at the very first Challenger Series in Price, Utah, and beat Jose Mendez, who is now like a 6-0 pro. It's fun to see guys come back when they're Amis. Um, and uh, we have a flyweight title under contract that hasn't been announced yet and a potential Bantamweight title that will be should be announced next week. Um, the full card will be announced before tickets go on sale. Don't wait. It's going to be fantastic. Cannot wait for it. Zach, thank you so much for the time, and we will see you in a couple of weeks.